Introducing RS30 Ultra. The first sim racing wheel and pedals designed by a professional championship racer. Officially licensed by Microsoft, RS30 brings next level realism to your racing sims. Sense the road, know your vehicle, and get faster lap times as you tear through the track. Dual helical gear motors give you more torque than traditional gear drive motors with the same smoothness and quietness of a belt drive motor. Experience a stunning 6 newton meters of torque, the most torque per dollar than any other wheel, and fast, accurate feedback with zero dead zones. Feel every nuance and know exactly when you're understeering, oversteering, or losing traction. Spring-loaded pedals give you responsive throttle modulation and brake progression for absolute control and precision, just like the real thing. Two additional pedals can be used as clutch and e-brake, or as pedal-free throttle and brakes. A rotation switch lets you easily toggle between simulation racing and arcade-style racing. Even the diameter of the wheel is calibrated to exact race car specifications. And an easy share button lets you save and share your best laps with a simple push. From the metal build to the suede wheel and steel pedals, every detail is dialed to give the entire system a high-end feel. Get better, go faster, win more, and enjoy every second of it. With RS30 Ultra, you'll race like a pro and feel like one too. RS30 Ultra by GTR Simulator. Go fast.
with the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker. The future is feeling. For a new PC or an upgrade to your current one? Look no further than Ford Entertainment Group, your home for the best quality and value in new, pre built, and custom PCs at the lowest price guaranteed. We have affordable PC solutions for any budget with custom builds starting at $595. Even the pros turn to Ford Entertainment Group to get them up and running. With valued customers from all over the world, it's easy to see why Ford Entertainment Group is the most trusted brand in custom PCs. I wanted to save my awesome subscribers the most money when they started their sim racing journey. Well, I searched high and low for the best deals. And I'm so proud that Jeffrey and I have partnered up so I can spread the good news about where to get the lowest price on a high-quality computer. Feel confident when buying from us with the FEG Satisfaction Guarantee. Get yourself on track today by visiting us online at FEGPC.net. Tonight's race has been bred in and brought to you in part by our good friends over at GTR Simulator, D-Dub Button Boxes, Gear Head Coffee, Ooze Motorsports, Butt Kicker, Matt Mills Racing Team, Ford Entertainment Group, PC.net, Bands Maintenance, LPT Pallet, Barrytown Cleaners, and, of course, Paul's Wraps. Thank you so much from all of us here at Pedal Limited Racing League for sponsoring us up. And thank you once again for joining us in here tonight at Pizza Racing TV Studios. We are now live at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Tonight, we present to you the GTR Racing Simulator Cup Series of Pedal Limited Racing League as they bring to you tonight's race showcase at Charlotte Motor Speedway presented by BD-Dub Beaten Button Boxes. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I am the Crusader Christian Shriver on the line here down in North Concord, North Carolina, here in the suites in the butt in the world of the extremes. We go. Charlotte Motor Speedway tonight is going to see a heavy dose of hard racing and hard battles that come from 20 of the best drivers of the Pedal Metal Racing League crew. And tonight, we're going to see them go at it live here and now. So let's take a look at our starting lineup on the pole. We will see Kevin Bullock in the 72. It is outside. That'll be the Rattlesnake Robert Con in the 71. Number two, Tom Lanyard, the 23. As outside, that will be Robert Dudley, Bill Dudley in the 49. Row three, it's Dustin Sonaker in the 66. As outside, Wally Bab rockets the 99. Row number four, it's Kevin Winker in that 42. And his outside, Dan the Man Miglin in the 31. Row number five, Jeffrey Oaks in the 20. As outside, Jason Henry pilots the number three. Row number six, Brandon Pike in the 22. As outside, Dennis Warrens in the number 90. Your next row on back, we'll see here to it. It will be Jeffrey Oaks in the 20 days outside. That'll be, or excuse me, that'll be the uh, row seven. That'll be Cindy the Closer Taylor in the seven. And then her outside, it's Jeffrey Tots Ups in the 72. Row number eight, it's Kevin Baker in the 87 days outside. That'll be Chantel the Throttle Bottle in the number five. Row nine sees Matthew Hoffer in the 84 to his outside. That's Christopher Jordan in the 78 final starters. Michael Pratt, the 45 days outside. Philip Brown, the 17. Right, fans. You wanted a lineup. I don't think 20 cars on the track is going to get your blood pumping a little bit. I don't know what will. We're ready to go racing here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, Concord, North Carolina. 
is about to see to it a heavy hitters race a march of charging in a battle unlike any other this is pedal the metal racing league's cup series presented by d-dub button boxes here tonight at at charlotte motor speedway Lining them off around the track here right now. Drivers are currently getting situated out here at the moment. As the Rattlesnake, Robert Conn, 21, and Dan the Man Miglin are getting taken care of here. They have to uh, go to the back end here for this one. Feeling them around out of turn three and four. And again, this is a whole host of drivers that have really just came from all across the areas of call across the states and North North, North America. And of course, our, our streamlined areas of the United States here from Canada to the Rock of Newfoundland to the uh, the outskirts of Arkansas to the in, to the obviously infield lands of North Carolina as well. There are many drivers here tonight that are wanting to prove they can be the toughest and the baddest of them all. Some hometown drivers actually on their home track here. And the, one of them being Matthew Hoffman, the 84. He's actually he lives in North Carolina. So this is definitely a homecoming for him in his track field. As they pilot him off around out of turn three and four. Race fans, get on your, get your phones up. Get the cameras rolling. Get the show on the road. We're ready to go at it here and now. The time has come. The time is now. It's time to go racing at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And we'll talk more about how bad this track can be on the tires wear here tonight, but right out of the gate here, out of the start, it will be Robert Dud Dud Dudleyville Dudley with the early advance. The number 49 can marches his way around the track. Firing him off around the corners here. Wally Babb in the 99. Gun and falling back in the line. Trying to get back into the pace here. Dudleyville has the early advantage. He has a race lead. Meanwhile, Kevin Bullock there at 62. Continues to keep his end zone in. Keeping his run off here. Looking for some opportunity to strike when it's possible. See if maybe there's some kind of chance here to strike it big when he goes home. Now it sets up that 45 of Marco Pratt. He is not on the lead lap at the moment. Or leading this. He's actually currently... Supposed to, be, sir, supposed to be in the back end of the spectrum here, but I believe there's a live timing feed on their issue right now. Kevin Winker, the number 42, Coca-Cola machine, continuing to dive her down in, dive her all run off on the corners. Dennis Warrens, the number 90, trying to hang in there as well while Dustin Sonaker continues to battle them out. Sonaker is very extremely controlled when it comes to managing the tires and managing a fuel run. We know him before because of what he did back at Michigan International Speedway. Will the same effects apply tonight? Well, right now, he better figure it out quickly because that's not the run you want off of turn two. You saw him bobble there coming out of that corner. Lost a lot of trouble. And up to the front now, Robert Dudley is going to have some company. Kevin Bullock on the outside. Now comes that 62 machine. He's trying to march the charge and march the run in. Bullock looking to knock down the reigning defending season champion here. Will he be able to do so, though? That remains to be the question. We go on board with old Dudley. Burrowing his way off that bottom end. That's generally where most riders will want to run off that. That's where most of them typically go into as they go in. As some of them also have a little trouble staying off that wall protection. Des Warren's one of them. Warren's in trouble now, Pike. Also caught in mix this one here. Big wreck right on the front straightaway. Everyone involved. We got a caution. Dennis Warren's the number 90 getting caught up in a bad circumstantial area there. Had nowhere to go and nowhere to get out of, and the caution flag flies on out. We'll take a look at the P2 Mr. Replay to see what happened transpiring here. This is presented in part by tonight by our friends over at D-Dub Button Boxes. 
you have the main franchise front scar on that one number 90 there, but unfortunately for Dennis, he found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. Wally Bab getting a little healthy dose there to one of the drivers, I think. I don't know if maybe that was just a bit tad aggressive on that end. We'll have to take a look at it here from another angle. Again, it's extremely easy to get kind of caught up in the mix of things, kind of caught in the run of things as well. Never look at it from our angle. 99 just slightly up and again it looks like it may have just been a slight air communication there but Dennis Warren's unfortunately had nowhere to go and nowhere to get out of and that's what ended up costing him trouble and giving himself into a bit of a pickle there first caution of the night here in this 80 lap shootout also a reminder here as well folks this isn't going to be your only race you get broadcasting on Pete Series TV although it won't be the Facebook live stream and you will have one going on exclusively on YouTube you will see that coming right after this race shake and bake racing link returns to the show and they will bring out the divisional cup series you'll be sure to tune out in for that one when the time comes and also subscribe over to our YouTube right now so you do not miss when the green flag drops Warren's going to go to the end of the line here. Unfortunately, he's still currently working out some kinks down there. And that number 90 damaged badly on the rear end. I think he wanted to get that instant repair used up, but he knows he's only got two of them here tonight. That could be the downfall for him. Tom Lanier, the 23, was involved in that little wreck as well with Wally Babb and the 99. Rotec Machine gave him a little bit of a love tap down there, and I'm not sure... How much of that was again? Yo, know, giving it off from that bottom lane, because again, that bottom lane there with that blue corn, with that blue line is that can be a very tough, substantial area to be stuck into, and you don't want to get anywhere near it. But again, you still gotta try to find a way to work your way around that air, that playing field, and try to give yourself some speed and distance when you go out of here. Yeah, it looks like Chantel Throttle Piles has a little bit of problems down there. Not really sure what's going on with that five down there. And again, these drivers have instant repairs to be used, and they can use down there. So I'm not really sure why they're not able to get into him as quickly as they want to. I know Dennis Wise, he may have got to get a tow. I don't know, maybe Chantel had to get a tow as well. Did not see her get into any wrecks, but that's two drivers out right now and only 18 drivers left on the field. So here we go. We'll bring him back around, bring him back into the fight here tonight. Justin Noah comes on board saying, whoa, and Timmy Reed saying, Dudley is my buddy. Me and him raced a hundred deer to get together. Great guy. And also a little rub for the 42, Justin Noah rooting on for Kevin Winker in that 42. You see that target-based car out there. Looking to possibly give himself a little bit of a fight, a little bit of a battle here. Running him off on the corner's end of the spectrum here. Back to the green flag, and we're off and running. Drivers will have a lot of work to do here when it comes to trying to keep themselves out of control and out of pacing here. Fielding him down, in through, is out of turn three, one and two. And the number 62, Kevin Bullock, manages to hang on to the race lead. Robert Dutley in the 49, the 99, and Wally Babb also on the bottom lane. Babb right now currently trying to put the Rotec machine up ahead of everybody in between. He knows he needs a points day, but Kimmy Winker is still in that hunt as well. A lot of hard racing between these guys. A lot of serious back and forth griping between the drivers. No one wants to give an inch here. 
In the back of the pack here, Sessa Sonaker will have to do battle here with the number 70, Cindy Closer Taylor there. The NASA machine is starting to rocket towards orbit and, and push everything to the moon because she is looking for everything she's got. Dan the Man Miglin, the 31, and Robert the Rouse the 21, both kind of eyeing each other's backs. Their shots here are just incredible, incapable of missing out. So Naker going up top, trying to evade the survey there. Rakan gets a little bit of a bump there, coming off there, but he manages to stick it in the control zone. Tom Lanier in the 23, he's backing off a little bit more than I think he really should as we got a caution draw it out. Caution's out, oh no, big wreck right in the turn three and four section. Dennis Warren, Christopher Jordan, and Jeffrey Tatas all involved in this one. Caution's back out, oh, whoa. In a big, bad situation, unfortunately, popping up here. Let's take a look at what happened on this one. Here's the PT Minutes of replay and all of its glory. Look at this. Three wide swivel. Look at Michael Pratt. Now, I'm not really sure if that was supposed to be a runoff there or what that was, but I don't know if that was really the smartest move to do here in this case. That was a bit of a situational awareness there. Watch this game down the back straightaway. Michael was driving in deep and look at 72. He just slightly drifts down and Brad just completely takes care of business, takes care of everything there and Hoffer gets a big shaft of it. And from my end here, it looked like maybe Pratt went into it three wide scenario there. Kind of hard to say from that angle, but definitely Todd Tufts ended up getting kind of the shaft of that one, unfortunately. Wow. So a big bump, so a big upset here in last wise. Remember, we still got to get to lap 20 before we get the stage break. Lap 40 will be the other one around. Drivers ready to field back into position, get everyone situated back up. Lap 11 caution, unfortunately, coming out due to the uh, circumstances there between the 45, the 84, and the uh, 72. More so the 45 in them. So our field of drivers right now trying to get things taken care of. They obviously do not want to be driving too all over the top and all over the place here. Many, many individuals, you know, still struggling to keep up the distance, keep up the pace here. When we come back, though, race fans, there's still more action to be had. Charlotte Motor Speedway, which of these drivers will continue their playoff contention hopes? Find out when we return. Tonight's race, ladies and gentlemen, has been brought to you in part by our good friends over at GTR Simulator. Welcome to the future of GTR Racing Simulator. It's not that we broke the mold, we just never used one. By D-Dub Button Boxes, quality button boxes made your way. D-Dub Button Boxes always has you covered. By the Butt Kicker, best of performance on feeling of real tracks on the virtual world. The Butt Kicker, feel what you've been missing. And bike your head coffee, whether you're wrenching on your vehicle at home in the garage or servicing customers at the automotive repair facility or dealership, your head coffee provides a unique premium coffee that keeps your motor running. Right about now, I got a feeling that uh, we get the lights around here working. You got to have a little bit of that coffee, obviously, because this place is lit up to the sky. Charlotte Motor Speedway, beautiful night lights under the scenes, under the scars and above. Here at Concord, North Carolina, it's a beautiful landscape and beautiful area, to say the least.
Justin Noah saying this is some intense racing RA. Joe Glover saying let's go 99. Arley Dudley saying okay. PTM Dud Dud Dudleyville. Well, I presume that's only a little love for the Dudleyville camp, and I can't say that I blame him. So it looks like stage break will still be happening on lap 20, which will give them an opportunity to strike it big when they can. Kevin Bullock in the 62 will have his opportunity strung away while Robert Dudley will try and hold him off. And again, you only get 80 laps around these parts, and also you only have an hour and a half to get this race, or excuse me, an hour and 15. Yeah, that's right. We're on a time limit here. There ain't no playing around this time, folks. You only get one chance. If you don't get this in and figure it out, this is game over for you. There is no way you're gonna get this one finished out like that. You gotta get this. You gotta get this race styled up and fixed up. You saw the five of Chantel Pottle finally bringing TTR Racing Simulator D Dub button boxes back out on the track. Getting told from command there. Unfortunately, some unfortunate circumstances right out of the start of the race, costing her a lot of time and ended up getting sent into pit road. She now knows what she's going to have to do, which is literally fight her way back into this. Looks like Dennis Warrens may be out of the race. Judging by our command here on the live on the live feed, I think he has got some problems down there in the number 90. What a tough break for him and his crew. Obviously, he's just got to be infuriated knowing that he just can't seem to catch a break out here on these tracks, on these races. And he can drive with the best of them, too. Make no bones about it there, folks. He can certainly put up a wheel and put on a fight. Pace will field him in. Drivers will line him back up into the spot. As they bring him right back around here out of turn one and two. This next time by out of three and four, you'll see the stars in the cars line them up and rev them out. Let the motors hum. Let them rev out to their streams and all that can be. It's over 750 horsepower and these bad boys just turbocharged to full beyond belief. And again tonight, though, I don't think speed is going to be the biggest problem. I think one big problem they're going to have to watch out for is that fuel mileage and the tire mileage. Remember, the fuel mileage-wise, we can look back at what Dale Earnhardt Jr. had happened to him. He literally had the race locked up, but a fuel but a fuel run cost him dearly and ended up blowing out at the end. He told us, he would say later on, that he just made the mistake and could not stick with the run. He said to not, but of course, obviously, the one other thing we have talked about is those tires. If you shred those tires up, which is easy to do, you don't have much of a run left in you. And this asphalt surface here has a fine tuner thing about getting tires ripped up when you at least expect it and you don't want them to. To the restart zone, they hit them off. Looking for that runoff on the green. They will get the green back out and it's back underway here. Bullock will have the advantage out of the gate while the 49 of Robert Dudley goes up top. Looking for a runoff. Usually you can get a runoff on the outside there, but you got to really be boosting the momentum and boosting the speeds there. They know that with the last laps of the stage break coming into play, that could be a big factor here. Jeffrey Oaks, the number 20, been extremely consistent and conservative throughout the rest of the season. Been putting up some good numbers and some good battles as of late. It's going to be interesting to see if he's going to be able to keep doing that. And then some, while Wally Babb in the 99, Despite the errors earlier on, seems to be finding the error of his way and now moving ahead. Just trying to stay in touch and stay in rhythm right now. Robert Bullock, Robert Dudley and Kevin Bullock, though, man, they are back and forth still side by side for the race lead. Dudley trying to keep him away from it, trying to steer, the, steer clear of the run there. Dudley with the hard run off there. He's got a good charge coming. Lab 19, one more to go. Wally Babb a little bit loosey-goosey, a little problematic there for him, but he stabilizes it down, but it's in the corner, Taylor really in trouble. The seven almost losing it completely in the corner. She manages to hold back and save it down in the back straightaway, but you just saw right as he was going in turn one and two, that 07 NASA machine was off base and off center extremely badly there. Not good to say the least, and that's not something you want to see, obviously, as a driver that's a former champion on these circuits. Yellow flag is out. Caution is underway for the stage break, and Robert Dudley will win the stage one results. Lap four is where we show them the other stage break here. And right now, if I am the Dudley camp, I got to be pretty satisfied with this one, knowing short run is there. But will the long run be there? 
If it is, he's got a lot of tough competition. Bullock and Ke Winker, both the Kevins, will be in that hunt. Jeffrey Oaks in 20, and then that three of Jason Henry will have no problem putting a foot, foot full down into the pedal and straight digging into the metal. As we come back to you here from Charlotte Moore Speedway, more action to be had. Race fans, tonight's race presented in part by our good friends over at Ooze More Sports. Don't think we are cheating because you think you're fast. By LBT Pallet. Got a molt, got a pallet not up to tip top shape. Call up LBT Pallet. We got you covered. By Ford Entertainment Group PC.net. Matching your want with your wallet. They will always work with your needs to build the best PC at the right price. By Matt Mills Racing Team. Best of Xfin teams out there sponsoring and supporting Battle of the Mill Racing League this season. And if you want to help support Matt's journey, follow him up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. By Man's Maintenance. When you want, you want it done right, call a man. By Barrytown Cleaners. When you got yourself a mess, Barrytown Cleaners can help fix that up. And by Bottles Wraps. Most affordable designs made at your leisure. Bottles Wraps always bring out the best designs in your library. And right now, i got to believe some of these drivers here may be uh, very well aware they're rocking some good libraries out there and some really cool schemes, but at the same time, some of them definitely need to be keeping a close eye out on how much training paint they do around here because, again, you can trade paint all you want on the tracks like this, but this sort of surface and this kind of grind here really it tests the patience of all drivers and really tests the mentality of many others. And I got a feeling that could really make a difference here when it comes to that late run. Here, Chapman saying Tom Lanier makes everyone else look. No, I'm not saying that on Cameron. You can read in the comment section down below, though, folks. So as the field gets centered back up and into their position zone, a lot of hard racing to be had here still to come. Of course, still plenty of opportunities to strike back and get it big when you can get it. Of course, a big shout out, of course, to all the friends and family that have tuned on in with us here tonight. Again, if you haven't ever been on P3C for the first time, this is your first time enjoying the show. Well, we ask if you can like and follow us up here on Facebook. And then, of course, you head over to our YouTube and subscribe there. You'll see this race in its entirety for all the viewing pleasure to be had. And then we will see, of course, some exclusive YouTube content coming out through the books throughout these seasons and events. We'll be doing as much as we can with that and then some. So out of pit road-wise, Justin Sonaker and Jeffrey Todd Tuss were the only two to stay out. I believe they were going off their own pit strategies or fuel runs they had set earlier on. May not be a bad idea in many ways, but at the same time, I'm not sure if I really agree with that strategy. Because, you know, we've talked about it before where if you go into pit road a little too early, a little too late, it could end up costing you. I don't think I really would want to be up front for the restarts because we saw earlier on where Lanyer and Bab got into it. Bab kind of just barely scraped the bottom and ended up sending him down in low and up top, giving himself a lot of trouble there. Lanyer hasn't been able to recover since then. He's been kind of just keeping an eye on things. Philip Brown there in the Gearhead Coffee 17. Good to see him back out on the show. Actually got to work with him a couple nights ago here, of course, on PT Racing TV. Now from just the Facebook but the YouTube end. It's an honor and a pleasure to have him on board. You know, the commentary and calling in action. Definitely, he definitely can uh, move his, he can run his mouth as much as he can drive a track on the car. So I guess I can't call him a Daryl Waltrip, but I can certainly call him a, a bit of a head scratcher out here when it comes to figuring out if he'll be able to beat us all out. I mean, he can certainly dial it in down there. That is for certain. One lap to green here now as our field paces him in, set him back down. Dustin Sonaker, your 66 Toyota Camry will be your race leader. Up 12 spots, though, in the hard charge of the night. Jeffrey Todd Tufts in the 72 LBT pallet will be the man to watch out for after that circumstantial issue he had a little earlier on. Will he be able to garner up some speed and get some momentum back in his favor? Robert Dudley and Kevin Winker 
are in that hunt as well. Pace them off the back straight away and watch for the drivers to lay down the hardware and lay down the thunder. Thankfully though, we still don't have any rain and iron racing, so I don't think we gotta worry about thunderstorms just yet, but I got a feeling it'll happen eventually. Dustin Sonaker in the 66 will be the leader off, although do not be confused. No, that's not a 99 on the top of his hood. That's a 66 on his on his car. Believe me, I always get confused when they have 66 or 99 cars out there. It always gets confusing. Rocketing him out of turn number four this time by. They will bring him back to the D-Dub button box restart zone. The action is packed, and the moment is last. Let's get back to it. And how well will these drivers fare when it came to those that were not going into pit road just yet? Again, there's a lot of strategy that plays in. They may have they went in a little earlier on, but again, do those tires make a difference on that kind of run? That is what I really would like to know. That's what I kind of feel could be the saving outlier or the saving grace in this case. Bringing it back up around the bottom end. Sornaker trying to defend off all those that come before him. And he is doing a great job. But Kevin, Kevin Winker, the Coca-Cola target 42 machine, is hammering everything he's got on that bottom lane. Once again, him and Jeffrey Todd Tuss will be in mono a mono action as Dan the Man Miggler kind of sneaks his way around. The hardest part I gotta believe right now for these drivers is just making sure that they don't spin out any more times. They keep everything under control, keep their lines in sight. They know there's a lot at stake and obviously a lot on the line when it comes to those prizes and then some, but really shouldn't even matter to them right now. The thing that should matter to them is the heart, is the heart and soul of hard racing here right at the moment. Phillip Brown going into the end zone here. A little trouble down there for the closer. Cindy Taylor, the 07 slowing down badly here. Couldn't quite tell what happened or transpired there, but right now at the moment, the 20, uh, Jeffrey Oaks is going to go out of here with the number 22. No number on him, but it's the Ben's oil shell. Brandon Pike, and he says he marches them off of that corners of turn four. Yeah, Jeffrey Todd Toss is now looking to possibly make his name and make his presence felt as well. He's not given any chances of striking on this behalf. He only wants what's best, and that's to stay in this run. And Robert Kahn knows that all too well. Todd is giving everything she's got, but the speed's just not there. Watch out, though, for Dan Miglin if he gets this up to you here. I got a feeling that him and Kahn may have a little bit of a thing or two coming back from Nashville Super Speedway. Remember, it was back at Nashville Super Speedway where Miglin. Oh, we almost deja vu there. Brandon Bike goes into the infield there. Cross Connor in. Pike trying to save it, he does. I don't know how he saved it, but he saved it on the trial section. But that speed is long gone, unfortunately. Ends up getting tagged in there, coming off the reins from Dan Miglin. And again, I think that made it's been a little bit of that hard racing atmosphere that Charmer Speedway brings to the table, but I got a feeling Con may have seen that another way, and Miglin may have seen that as his own way, but Brandon Pike also probably has his own thing. Two cents about that. There's a lot of guys out here that watch out for themselves and watch out for their drivers and I guess a little drama on the track never seems to hurt one another. But is that going to be what plays out this entire time? Right now Jeffrey Oaks is going at it back and forth with Robert Kahn. The quick lane 21 motorcraft devouring into the Jack Dow Moore Sports 20 of Jeffrey Oaks. Those two range back from the NASCAR heat days where Oaks, he would get the trumped out and beaten a lot by Khan. This time, though, the shoe is on the other foot. Oaks, he feels like he can prove he is a better driver and he can prove he's a faster driver on many tracks. Down across the corners here, three wide salute here just for a brief moment. Tom Lanier and Wally Bat back at it while Dot Tufts continues to build and lose a lot of momentum on these runs. And again, that was really due to that pit strategy idea and his mindset there. I think what he's after, though, is trying to see if maybe he can get a good idea of what it will be like when the last 40 come up. Because remember, it's an 80-lap race. We've got stage two coming up at lap 40 here in just a little bit. And there certainly is no air, room for error. You've got to basically make sure these things are dialed in and dialed up on the track. 
short run or not, there is still a lot of aggression that pulls through at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Coming out again, no, to number three, Jason Henry here. You can see the Chevy Camaro is just starting to light up the track, light up the speed hole right behind him, though. We got trouble. Dan Miglin caught in a bit, a little, little scruffle there. Unfortunately, the 31. And old Miglin gets goes for a little tumble and a fumble there, and that is not what you wanted to see there at all. Here's a PT Mr. Replay of strengths. Let's see what happened here. And, well, I'm not going to lie. It looked like he drove that thing in pretty deep. Tom Lanyard, I believe, saved his car, but the uh, same can't be said for Miglin. He went right in between there with Dustin Sonaker. I'm not sure how to call that one other than let's just take a look from our drone cam. That's the best way to tell this one entirely. So, so Naker drives it in a little bit too low, gets kind of caught off guard, and unfortunately on that front straightaway, that is not the right place to play it at. So Naker, definitely damaged up. You see the smoke popping out of that thing just a minute ago. He's going to have some work to do. Still a few laps left to go here. Obviously some hard battles coming their way, but some of the drivers that fell a lap down or fell out of that contingency like the five Chantel Powell is now actually getting only closer to about two more laps down or about three in the moment. Dustin Sonaker, Kevin Baker, and Phillip Brown all trying to get back on the charge, back on the lead lap. Dan Miglin, much of the same. And again, this is just kind of how gears shift in so quickly. You just never know what will transpire and where everything gets kind of, kind of wrapped around on the track. You just can only can hope for the best and hope that, yeah, you know, the other driver messes up before you do. This is our fourth caution of the night. And I'm not sure they're going to be able to get it to lap 40 without a very hard little runoff because I know for Dudley, he's paying close attention to what Khan and Bullock and Oxy are doing. Because, again, Oxy has been pretty much lights out. On consistency and making the runs off when he needs to. Khan's been much the same, but it's hard to really justify, you know, the idea that Bullock isn't some guy, isn't a snare driver. You got to keep your eye on there in that grub guy, 62. Because I say that without without uh, without any issue, that Bullock has been pretty much past past the point of no return, definitely putting up a fight when he can. Laps charging back and time leading away here. Anybody's guess who will win this one out, that's for sure. It seems as though the main two are looking like Dudley and Bullock. But again, we haven't seen Khan or Oxy up in the front half all day long until now. And uh, like I said, the way I'm seeing it right at this moment, this looks like it could very well be a golden opportunity for Khan and Oxy to just flat out run it out and see which one gets the better of the other. And I mean, that's not a bad move or idea indeed, but again, you're trying to take down the reigning defending champion, Robert Dudley, and you're also trying to knock down an up-and-coming fast guy in there in Kevin Bullock. And then, of course, the two veterans, Robert Khan and Jeffrey Oaks, kind of hanging in between. And then you got a bit of a wild card back behind here with just Jason Henry and Tom Lanyard. Now, again, there's a few drivers that are trying to get their laps back, trying to get their speed, trying to get their momentum back here, which I think they may be saving for that last half, but it's hard to really say because sometimes these drivers literally catch you sleeping. What they're trying to do is they're trying to make it seem like they're not fast so they don't have the momentum, but when it come, when it boils down to it, they will, uh, they will have no trouble literally just 
kind of taking your breath away and then really catching you out out with no return. They certainly like to do it, and they will do it if they feel like it. Marching their way out around, out of turn number two. This time by race fans, they are ready to field them back into position, ready to give themselves a little bit of an opportunity to strike when the iron is hot. Last caution, unfortunately, came out with 66 of Dustin Sornaker and Dan Miglin getting into it there. Sornaker maybe slightly drove it down a little too much. Miglin drove up a little bit. It's hard to really call from that angle. The official said they'll judge it later on is what they are telling me right now on my microphone and my headset. So that will open the door up for some more hard racing, more heavy battles in between here. Which one will be the start? Which one will get the advantage though off the restart? Remember, they're only going to have a couple laps left here in the stage. Lap 40 vastly approaches. And one of these guys going to end up winning it. But will they drive it all the way to their ends, the meets, but just even get a win? We'll find out. If I was them right now, my first thought wouldn't even be to just try to drive it in that deep like that. It would be more or less try to keep yourself under control, save yourself for the next stage. That would be my thought anyway. I wouldn't even let anyone know what I'm up to. But Dudley already kind of has a good idea of what he's been up to, and Robert Kahn is getting a good idea of what to do with it. Up top, 49, opens the door big time here. Jason Henry, though, gets himself in a bit of a troublesome situation. The three wrecks right in front of all of them. Caution flag is out, problems, and Miglin gets caught in the middle of it, too. Phillip Brown gets a little noggin knocker there, and that is a tough break and circumstance there for the three. And that Chevy team just cannot seem to get out of the dirt and get out of the mud when it needs to. Unfortunately, this is a big circumstance that just cost him in that stage there. But now he's got some work to do. Another look at it here. Ooh, and Wally Babs has already been kind of in trouble once tonight. I don't know. We're going to go look and look at that one one more time. I think we're going to need to listen in that on that rev limiter down there. That's one thing I will say right here and now. Well, the way I'm hearing it, it sounds like he was backing off down there. He was not trying to get into it. But unfortunately, that ended up just kind of costing either of them a chance there. And that's a tough break there for Jason Henry. Why Bab will kind of find himself in the uh, proverbial tough spot. Kevin Baker and Kevin Winker are going to stay on out, try to get their last ditch effort attempts in. And I really, I just, it's hard to believe just how many cautions these these guys keep getting themselves into. But again, it's just, there's so much on the line to them. It's, Really, winning is a very big and important factor for them, and that's really what they're always been about. But, I mean, how many times can you go for winning when you just keep destroying cars out on the track? That's the one thing I just never got. I never really feel like it had to be that way, or it really had to go that far into the run. Well, right now, judging by performance and position-wise, Kevin Baker is supposed to be about a lap down, about, about a 
few spots back here in this case. It's not supposed to be on the position he's in right now. As for everyone else, actually, everyone that is currently in the 19th spot and up is actually back on the lead lap. Philip Brown does have a lot of damage, though, unfortunately, so I have work to do. The 5, Chantel Pottle, actually somehow back on the lead lap, despite how many laps she was down earlier. And if I'm, if I'm an old betting man, but honestly... That's kind of scary, knowing that some dr the driver has been kind of laying in wait back there, has been keeping a close eye on touches of things and knows what everyone else has been up to. Uh, that could be the advantage that she needs here. We'll have to see. Matthew Hoffer right now, the hometown boy, he's not really shown up to his speeds, up to his levels, I feel. He certainly has been up to a good advantage on kind of battling out, but he has yet to show what truly he is capable of and what he will do here. Kevin Baker is supposed to be a lap down, the, supposed to be uh, putting himself a lap down at the moment. I believe the officials are trying to get the transponders fixed on his car there. I don't think they're too happy that it's all over the place there. The 6 6 and the 5 back on the pace here. Philip Brown is going to try to get back on the pace. That damage zone, that 17, I guarantee it will not keep him on pace for long. He may have a decent short run car, but I guarantee if he doesn't get that thing fixed up now, he's going to be in trouble. Feel the pace in, feel the drivers around, and we'll see what happens to transpires here in just a quick moment. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker. The future is feeling. Back here to PT Racing TV, folks, right now. And currently, Pedal the Middle Race League looking to finish out their night on a higher note than they've had been all day long. To all stages complete. Last minute laps are now being put to the test here. Fifth caution so far out of this A lap race. But the question is, you know, will any of these drivers be able to keep their cool and keep themselves under pressure? Because this is where the laps are going to really burn off tires. And they're going to burn up fuel. There is no more of that short run nonsense. It's either give and go or take for what you will. Kevin Winker and Robert Kahn will look to try to master, will try to masterfully plan that out and try to get something going. Right now, Winker still searching for another W and an even bigger points lead around these parts. But Robert Kahn, he knows one thing is for sure is that he is going for broke every time he goes out on the track. Will he get that opportunity once again? This time by race fans. Space car comes off out of turn four. It's time to get back to the action. Back to the racing. Off a of turn four. Down to the race. To the restart zone. Presented by D-Dub Unboxes. It's now go getter time. Here we go. You can feel the power these drivers have off those corners and off those runs, man. They will not live out. They will give it everything they can. 
Opportunity to strike and arise when you need it to. But again, you know, who will be a little bit too aggressive off the starts? Right now, Kevin Wicker seems to not have a mind on that. The 21 of Robert Kahn following right behind him. Robert Dut Dut Dudleyville, does he also kind of playing into the hand, playing into the favor? Jeffrey Oaks and Kevin Bullock right in the mix of this. Neither one giving an inch, neither one giving a chance to add on the track. They only want what's best, and that's to survive and conquer. On board with the hometown boy, Matthew Hopper tonight. He's up nine spots. The only one that's ahead of him right now is actually 10 spots up with this Michael Pratt, the 45, right outside of him. Pratt looking to possibly make a maneuver off, make a little bit of a jump cut into position here and take it away from him. But there is no gimme here. There are no there are no remorses on the track. You either take and get. You see either you take or you don't. There are no give me's. You weren't for every single ounce of this race. And right now OC is working for every ounce of the track. Dudley is right in front of him, trying to hammer down though. Jack Dalmore Sports is number 20 and Jeffrey Oaks is continuing to push through the momentum and push through the charge. Michael Pratt, much of the same. So close together, so in an opportunable sp spots being presented to them, but yet they still somehow find a way to make it all work and make it to their perfection. Now I'll tell you one thing right now, Connor and Winkert, they are still back and forth right now for that race. They're still side by side going at it. How long can they keep this going? Only time will tell. All I know is this could be anybody's guess. This is an absolute fight and a half here. To the blimp, there we go. You get a good look at that Roval infield as well of Charlotte Murray Speedway. But right now, we're not running the Roval, we're running the Oval. And to the spectrum, and you can just see just how close cornered everyone is getting at the moment. No one gives an inch, no one makes a mistake. They only want what is best for them, and that is to take this one away from the rest of the field. Rotex 99 and Wally Babb is starting to fall off pace a little bit. That Rotex machine is currently losing a lot of momentum off the corners. Robert Dudley and Jeffrey Oaks are not looking the same. Actually, a matter of fact, they're using the draft line as their saving grace here to help each other out. But Babb, man, give him credit where credit's due. He is literally hammering the throttles on the exits more than anybody else, and it somehow seems to be working better than anything else the other drivers can come up with. Question though is, will they be? Will it work out all long run? Because again, there's still 30 laps remaining here in the GTR Simulator Rate Racing Cup Series of Battle of the Middle Racing League. Down on the bottom strip now, Bab now looking to get the moment to get the build up with speed. He's got Winker and Con right in front of him. And these two are almost just kind of got almost kind of cock blocking the entire track. They're not giving anybody any chances. Don, I know for sure he was not going to give anyone a chance here tonight if he had his way about it. He only wants one thing, and that is to become the champion again. And obviously, if you're pulling off runs like this, I mean, there certainly is a good reason at stake for why you deserve that championship. But I mean, at the moment, still. There are just no area to go. There's really no openings. These guys are continuing to keep going back and forth, side by side. It literally, I don't know how Winker's car is still even able to hang pace with Khan. And Khan finally starts seeing an opening against some silver runoff there. Battle them off the zones, into the corner strips they go, and now this looks like it could be anybody's guess who will take the top three. Remember, points matter in this case. The higher you go, the better you're off. And you need to do that consistently. It's not a matter of you need to do it one time. This isn't like that NASCAR series will make you to believe. You best make sure that you get every point dashing, every shot counted. Because that point system just hurts you in the long run if you try to tamper with it or if you try to mess with it. Little three wide suit opportunity arising, but for Bullock, he ends up getting it into a city, the Colter Taylor. They rack down on the front straightaway. No caution yet, no caution. No, they're not going to get it out. 
Yikes. Well, caution now has been thrown here. The caution is out. The caution is out. The officials calling for it. They said, wait a minute. The, the iRacing officials did not get it. We need to get this going here. Let's take a look at it, what happened. But look right here. This is where you see he thinks he's striking gold. And Bab just barely dressed off, unfortunately. Cindy Taylor and them kind of getting into it as well. That's kind of a bit of a racing ordeal, I would say. I don't know how we will judge that, but I don't know. The officials will have to decide it. To me, if I was them right now, I would not want to be a judge tonight. That's for sure. While the drivers get fielded in for a little pit stop and a little splash of gas, and maybe some sesh tires, we'll be right back after these quick commercial messages. Introducing RS30 Ultra. The first sim racing wheel and pedals designed by a professional championship racer. Officially licensed by Microsoft, RS30 brings next level realism to your racing sims. Since the road. Know your vehicle and get faster lap times as you tear through the track. Dual helical gear motors give you more torque than traditional gear drive motors with the same smoothness and quietness of a belt drive motor. Experience a stunning 6 newton meters of torque, the most torque per dollar than any other wheel, and fast, accurate feedback with zero dead zones. Feel every nuance and know exactly when you're understeering, oversteering, or losing traction. Spring-loaded pedals give you responsive throttle modulation and brake progression for absolute control and precision, just like the real thing. Two additional paddles can be used as clutch and e-brake, or as pedal-free throttle and brakes. A rotation switch lets you easily toggle between simulation racing and arcade-style racing. Even the diameter of the wheel is calibrated to exact race car specifications. And an easy share button lets you save and share your best laps with a simple push. From the metal build to the suede wheel and steel pedals, every detail is dialed to give the entire system a high-end feel. Get better, go faster, win more, and enjoy every second of it. With RS30 Ultra, you'll race like a pro and feel like one too. RS30 Ultra by GTR Simulator. Go fast. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen here live now with Pedal of Metal Racing League and the GTR Racing Simulator Cup Series action still coming your way from Charlotte Motor Speedway here in Concord, North Carolina. The battles certainly have been impressive to say the least to watch and for some maybe even harder to master. Kevin Winker actually doing kind of the unthinkable goes into pit road for a little pit strategy here and setting him up for a fresh set of tires where Khan opted to stay out on what he's got right now. Brandon Pike will move up into the second place spot with Dudley and Jeffrey Oaks following in for pursuit. And with laps winding down here race fans this could be anybody's guess what will transpire here. Some heavy hitters kind of moving through the field and moving through the charge. Dan Miglin and Bullock will be up in the fight again. Cindy the closer Taylor just, man, she just cannot catch a single break this season. She's having all sorts of problems and getting caught up in their worst times and their worst wrecks. And I got to believe, you know, see, she's not, she knows that it's, it was bound to happen or it will happen once in a while, but. I really don't think as a driver, she was expecting it to happen nearly as much as it has nor as much as she wants it to have. And the other female, Chantel Pottles, had probably the worst luck off the start. But again, it was early, and she managed to get some breaks here with the lap fuel runs and the lap, lap traffic obviously coming into play. But now will that all pay off into her advantage and pay off here now? We'll find out. All that 750 horsepower motors just blowing through the field, blowing through the momentum here. There's problems down there though for Kevin Baker. Baker, watch out down there on the back straight away. The A7 wrecks out in trouble down there for him. 
Comes to a scratching hold. There is no caution, though. No caution thrown. He's going to go into pit road. He's just going to let it get it fired back off and call it a night. Put it on the trailer, I guess you could say. The number 20, get Jack Dalmore Sports Stove. OC is starting to make a maneuver, make a charge off. Yellow is out this time, though. We got a yellow out. Yellow, yellow, yellow. And the five Chantel Pottle getting caught up in a big little lick down there, unfortunately. Trouble's there for the five machine. And caution was thrown this time around. We'll see what happened here. I think this could be a bit of a trivial circumstantial run here. Take a look around the chopper camp. Brandon Pike off pace big time here. Tom Lanier kind of trying to drive it down in. It looks like the five just kind of got into a bad spot. Jeffrey Todd Tuss. I don't think he really knew where he was going, unfortunately. and didn't have anywhere to play it out at, but... Nevertheless, unfortunately, a caution had to be thrown out there because of it. Take a look at this one one more time from another angle. We'll see what went down. Looks like a bit of a circumstantial circuit evidence. Yeah, well, Todd Tuss right here. I mean, yeah, the end of day, you got to race your race, but I, I don't know about that one. That one could be, that could be a little bit misrucified there. We'll take one more look, I guess, while we're at it. Yeah, it was three wide there. He was, I think he was trying to sneak by the five by just kind of grazing her, but ended up not going that way. Wow. And the five just, again, one of those drivers, she just cannot catch a break here. We talked about Cindy, she can't catch a break. And now tonight, it's not even, it's not even funny at this point, just how tough it has been for the females and the males to even get around these parts. Jordan Dye coming on board here tonight saying keep it together, William Babb. Danny Graham saying go get her, Mr. Brown, the 17, watching here in Australia. Good to hear from you, sir. And he says it's time for a Bible session, mate. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not bringing the racing Bible out unless we, unless the code commands for it. Justin Noah coming on still here. Tiny, tiny bump, yeah. It was a tiny bump, but there's really not a lot you can do with it there. Well, field them back into position and just let her keep them on going. That's the only thing you can do here. You got to race her in. You got to race to the end of your heart and the end of the meets here. Everybody from 18 on back is still on lead lap. Dennis Warrens and Kevin Baker are both out for the night. Warrens calling it quits after eight laps. 57 laps for Kevin Baker, unfortunately. And I gotta believe a lot of that for both drivers is just due to frustrations and troubles building time and time again on the track. If the time warrants it, Danny, I promise you a racing a racing Bible session will be put into perspective and put in and put in place. But with only 18 laps left to go, the drivers are gonna have to find some way to maneuver around this tight areas, these tight planes. Right now, these Cup Series cars are just not given nearly as much opportunity and progression as we thought they would. Matter of fact, I think it's given them more a bit of headaches than anything else. But nevertheless, no driver quits out now. They all keep pushing forward and keep on going. And Robert Kahn and Robert Dudley will see to it once more. Off the restart zone we go again, and it's back to the action.
Wally Babb on the bottom lane, the 49er, Robert Dudley now moving the chains in, moving the speeds up to par. The 20 there of Oaks, Jeffrey Oaks is still kind of giving himself a little bit of an opportunity to leeway his position in top lane to the 23. Look at Torres, the bottom lane, look at Torres, the runoff. And then looking behind as well, Philip Brown at 17. Oh, he gets clapped around, no, no! Are you kidding me? Drivers getting out of that one cleanly, I would say, but unfortunately for some others, the same cannot be said. Oh my goodness, what a tough break there. 17 and the 72 getting involved in this one. Let's take a look at the replay. Once again, turn four seems to just be a disaster zone. And without a doubt, Todd Tufts got extremely loose there and had nowhere to go whatsoever, but that was certainly not what he wanted to do and not what he wanted to have happen, but the caution was thrown out there because of it. We'll take a look at his onboard camera here. He backed it off there, but he just overdrove it way too much, and you can see he's trying to stir it out, but too little, too late. Just, just nothing you can do about it. Wow. I don't know if there's anything left these drivers can do, but just get really to finish out this race. There's just been so much damage and so many cars sent to the outhouse or the shed house tonight. Is anybody going to be even able to escape the shadow realm here tonight? We'll have to find out when we come back. Looking for a new PC or an upgrade to your current one? Look no further than Ford Entertainment Group. You're home for the best quality and value in new, pre-built, and custom PCs at the lowest price guaranteed. We have affordable PC solutions for any budget, with custom builds starting at $595. Even the pros turn to Ford Entertainment Group to get them up and running. With valued customers from all over the world, it's easy to see why Ford Entertainment Group is the most trusted brand in custom PCs. I wanted to save my awesome subscribers the most money when they started their sim racing journey. Well, I started time over the best deals. And I'm so proud that Jeffrey and I have partnered up so I can spread the good news about where to get the lowest price on a high-quality computer. Feel confident when buying from us with the FEG Satisfaction Guarantee. Get yourself on track today by visiting us online at FEGPC.net. A big thank you again for Pedal Limited Racing. It goes to the sponsors and everyone that's helped support us here. Obviously, our fans and our friends and family that have come out here time and time again to help keep the show going, keep the world going for many of these drivers. Without them and their support, may not even be around here on PT Race TV or may not even be a PT Race TV to begin with. So, from all of us here at the show and Pedal Limited Racing League and PT Race TV, we thank you once more. So now, position is key, maneuvering is even more key. Which one of these drivers has this dialed in? Which one of them has everything figured out to an fault and to an extent? They will have 14 laps left to go. And now this isn't even a matter of who can survive on the long run. This is just a matter of who is the fastest on that short run. And in my opinion, we've already seen where aggression really can be a little bit over top, over topsy turmoil, and it really can give these guys a little bit more trouble than it's worth. Is that going to be the same circumstance here and now? Or can they somehow find a way to come out clean with this all? They're running out of time and running out of laps here to do it. They better get it down now. Here we go. Green flag is back on out. Remember, we have one more race to cover. After this, we may have to cut driver interview short. We do not know yet. We'll see what happens with this last bit of run.
Down the back straightaway here. Robert Dudleyville. Dudley is moving the chains in. He's looking for everything he got. Jeffrey Oaks, much of the same. Giving it a good runoff, a good battle in position. Neither of these drivers seemingly want to give in that easily. They want to make sure that they can hang on. Dudley knows there's a championship on the line again. He wants to be one of the only drivers to go back to back in a season. In a, sink, in a double series, but look at the five. Shenta Bottle putting a boot up to the points center right now. Kevin Winker in the 42. She's had an absolute headache of a night, but somehow she still finds a way to build speeds up in that Pottles Racing GTR Race Simulator D Dub button box number five. Tom Lanyard in the 23. He's had a bit of an auspicious kind of night as well. Then kind of cut into the wrong places at the wrong time. Justin Sonaker. Looking to possibly keep his moment and dreams alive. Every driver for themselves and everyone giving it their heart and soul. Matthew Hoffert, the hometown boy, dealing with Jason Henry, the number three here in the corner zone of turn two. Every driver for themselves. No one gives an inch. No one giving any chances. You can see the distance between Robert Conn and Dudley, though. It is still anybody's guess here. But Brandon Pike, though, is not going to get any guess other than just being wrecked in. Trouble for the number 22 Pennzoil Shell Machine once more. And just when you think things were going to get cleared up around these parts, unfortunately, disaster strikes again. Here's the PTM Missile replay. Whoa. All right, I'm going to be honest with you, folks. I'm not really sure. What happened there? That did not look like that's, that didn't look like the 17 was trying to dive it in around there. We're going to the cockpit view here. Honestly, this might kill the tail better for us here. We do have a rule of thumb here. That net code honestly has happened before, and I'm not really sure where that came from or where it even started from. I just know Brandon Pike got a short end of that staff there. This is hard racing right here. This is still good go. Everything's okay. Yeah, I mean, from my angle, that's not even, yeah. I don't know. I mean, to me, that's not even worth, that's not even worth trying to discuss. That's just the worst possible outcome because that darn net coach just comes in and takes it down. And even in the book of speed, it says so. In, verse, in the in song of speed, eight of seven, I really do not like the net code. The net code comes to come for me. The code has ended up dunning me in for for the, and that is not what the Bible verse I think we want to hear or even want anybody want to think about. But that kind of is how it played out for that one. So a tough break for Brandon Pike, and a tough break there for Philip Brown. Unfortunately, no driver coming out of that one unscathed. They will not hesitate till to put the restart flag back up. They want to get them finished now. Nine remain. Can they finish this race? They want to. They need to. They feel like they should. To. They should. So here we go. Fans come in for a treat. They're going to get one here on the last restarts. Here we go. Filing it back into position here with nine remaining. Anybody's guess here really is going to have the advantage here right now. Dudley and Khan going to strike it big. Dudley goes straight for the bottom lane. Khan trying to hold him back. The quick lane motocraft 21 is in trouble here as the Mercury 49. Toyota Camry is sneaking his way into the bottom stretches of the run. Looking for an opportunity to strike it big when he can. Oh, Khan with a bobbler goes up into the top side. He ended up with the wall protection. Jeffrey Oaks now sneaking his way back in between. 
He sneaks. He literally got a hard charge off that. Snuck everything he could to give it. Run, more run. One more chance at possibly making away a W. Oh, Kondo. He is just way too feisty for this. He doesn't give up just yet. Gonna give it everything he can. One last runoff. They'll bring him down out of turn three and four. Dimes running out, though. They better not mess this up now. This is not the time to do so. Hoaxie and Khan still neck and neck. Every driver getting sucked into the wall protection. They've got a little three wide slid in between. Phillip Brown, I don't know how the heck that 17 is even hanging in there, but he's hanging in it. The rest of the field trying to keep their distance, trying to keep every change, every charge they can on the spots. They know short run is the only thing they got left, so speed is their build up, speed is their momentum, key to victory. The momentous key to victories here are just being shown and really giving it everything you can do with. And then some, every driver just pushing their full throttle assault, their pedal, the pedal straight to the metal, tightening the seatbelt just a little higher because they don't know what could happen next. Jason Henry, though, all we know is happening next. He's in trouble. He's going up top. He's in a bit of a pickle there. They're going to wreck right down out of turn two. And Henry gets caught in a big, bad spot there, unfortunately, and that strands out another caution. Wow. Oh, my. This is literally turning green, white, checker territory. What happened here? Let's take a look at the replay. Henry gets extremely loose here. This is where he got himself into troublesome territory. He takes a little knock out of the 84. You can see the five backs off. Bullock literally drives it in deep and gives it everything it's worth. But that was a big mistake in my opinion. It ended up costing him more time than it was worth in my, in my end of it. Take one more look at it. We'll see right here. This is where he thinks he got an opening at. Yeah, I do not agree with that mindset at all there. Unfortunately, that was probably not the best place to be going in like that at that kind of speed, and I think he knows it very too well. Wow. They have five minutes remaining before we have to call it goods. We're not doing driver's interviews tonight, guys. we got to get ready for the broadcast on YouTube here in a little bit. Take a look back at the replay here. Just one more look at this here. I got a feeling this could be a bit of a circumstantial situation here for him. Uh, I guess we don't have anything else to view there. They're saying, no, we're not doing any more. Okay, well, producers, help me out here. Here we go. One more run around here. Will they be able to get this finished? Last ditch opportunities here. This is literally just a, this is going to be a quick stash for the dash, if you will. Dash for the cash. Coming out of turn four. Uh, turn two, excuse me. Robert Kahn, Jeffrey Oaks, and Wally Bapp. Extremely aggressive pushing and shoving. Just trying to get the other to move the chains. They want to knock down Dudleyville. Dudley knows he's in trouble if he doesn't keep up. White flag is out. Three white slid in between. Sydney Taylor gets in between the 99. He, she gets a piece of him. And Chateau Battle gets quieted in as well. 
Holy smokes, big wreck right behind the leaders here. Robert Dudley though, managing to corner off and keep the speeds and distance in at bay. And this time around, they'll have all three drivers battling themselves out to the finish as the checkered flag strike. Big wreck right behind him. Once again, Khan getting caught in there, but Dudley will win this one out. But holy smokes, what a wreck behind him. Oh my goodness, this is a wild, wild finish to say the least. But those that made it out, out of it all okay, I think they'll be happy with that one. And maybe North so can't be, ha can't be changed. Then the win that progressed through for this driver right here, Robert Dudley. He wins it here at Charlotte. And what a victory it was for him and the crew there. That is a big victory and a big battle end to this one. What a showcase and what a battle for him. Once again, another W and another chance to strike it big while he can. Let's take a look at the race results here now. I'll take a look, one more look at this here. Here's how it all plays out here in GTRA Simulators Cup Cup Series here, presented in part by Brett D Dub Button Box here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Robert Dudley wins it. Second goes to Jeffrey Oaks. Third to Tom Lanyard. Fourth to Cindy Taylor. Fifth to Robert Kahn. Sixth to Matthew Hoffert. Seventh to Kevin Winker. Eighth to Michael Pratt. Ninth to Dustin Sonaker. Tenth to Christopher Jordan. Rounds out top ten here tonight. Top twenty in total. Finishers come off with this one in the crux of this. Wild race to say the least here. That's all I really got to say to that. But nevertheless, that's how everything crumbles down. That's how everything finishes out. We do not have time for racing reviews. Sorry, fans. But we got to get going. So from all of us here at Pizza Racing TV, we appreciate you coming on board. Thank you again to the sponsors and everyone that helped us out. We can't thank you guys enough and hope that you enjoyed the show. And until the green flag flies high next time on Pizza Racing TV, we wish you nothing but the best. And thank you. Tune in the live stream on YouTube. It's coming up here in just a short few minutes.